Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT and we are looking at, uh, well, the Ruins of Thunder Tree right at the moment. It was part of the Fandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk Adventure series. Um, we completed this in the last video. We've got everything in here we need. The only thing we haven't managed to do is sort out that problem with the magical battle axe that does maximum damage on plants. Um, that is going to be a ongoing little challenge. Um, people have pointed out the fact that uh, actually it gets quite complex not just because of that detection script that we need but also the fact that it's a versatile weapon and what happens when it's a crit damage so it's actually kind of exponentially more challenging um, there are some solutions to that one just change it out for something completely different uh, <laughs> avoid the problem I don't want to do that though um, because it's the kind of problem that you guys will encounter as well and if I can help you solve that by solving it for myself then everyone's a winner right um, that's a big part of why we're here is to find how can we get these things working for us um, the other thing I could do of course to simplify that problem is change that battle axe out for a hand axe or for a great axe so we get rid of that versatile issue so we can at least get something working that's that's an option we could do as well um, and also somebody has suggested a mod called build a bonus which allegedly does exactly what we needed to do but there is a question mark over its uh, its compatibility and its functioning at the moment um, has it been updated is it still compatible with the 3.0 um, game engine so a uh, few question marks, a few things we can do about it, but I don't want to get stuck into that in this video. I want to plow on and make our next area. So we have done the old Owl, we have done Thunder Tree. Um, in this video, we are going to crack on and we're going to do Wyvern Tor. So let's move on with that. So I'm going to create a new scene here, uh, Wyvern Tor. There we go, create that new scene, lovely jubbly. Um, I'm just going to use the same name in there. I don't want it in navigation. I need to do my background image. Uh, I have already uploaded this or rather transferred it over. So here is the correct one. So as always, I'm going to activate that scene so you know what we're looking at to start with. All right. So um, right click, let's go back into configure. Let's uh, set that initial viewpoint. Um, I have, by the way, I have been through and reset the initial viewpoint and a whole bunch of those stuffs when we were looking at Fandolin. Um, went into a couple of the buildings and it was like, where the heck are we? And it's <laughs> I've recentered all of those um, just basically by doing this, going to that initial viewpoint. All right, so that's all sorted. Now we need to do this grid. Okay, so uh, if I go to grid again, I do like to just change this grid color. In fact, actually, I'm going to make it a different color for this purpose. Um, change that grid color for you so you can see we've got the blue grid is currently the foundry one the this gray one is what's on the image there I'm going to change our grid size to 50 straight away so let's let's save that okay and that's it's not actually far off is it that's pretty close anyway um, but it's not right okay so under our grid I still have installed uh, the background scaler now we looked at two of them didn't we we looked at grid scaler and background scaler um, I happen to have background scaler installed still um, on our live one. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, they both appear to be really, really good. So let's uh, click the top left of one square, the bottom right of the next square. And there is our new grid. So we're interested in the red grid aligning with the gray grid. Ignore the blue grid because that's what we're going to be replacing. So if we zoom out... That looks pretty darn perfect. Now it says right click to apply the grid. There we go. Just save those changes. And we can see now that the you barely can see it. You can see it over here a little bit. You can see that that blue grid, the foundry grid that is blue, now aligns to that pretty much perfectly. That's what we want. Okay. So uh, regardless of that, we can get rid of that opa we can get rid of that opacity make it transparent so we've only got that map grid lovely so um, lighting wise do we want this to have global illumination um, I kind of do because it's outside I'm kind of happy to do that um, fog exploration yes um, token vision absolutely um, we don't know if we need to do anything on grid 
What about ambience, weather effects? Uh... Ah, now it does talk about actually here there being some. Um, it talks about wood smoke, I think, from fires rather than anything else. I'm not sure. Misty Mountains. We're still in the tree line here, so perhaps we don't really want to go that far. So let's turn that off. Let's go without. We don't need it. That's fine. Okay. Good. Right. Uh, next thing. Do we need to do any walls? Yes, we do. If the characters are messing around down here, we don't want them being able to see what's in here. So let's slap some walls in immediately. Uh, let's start up here. So I'm just, again, for those of you who haven't followed along the rest of the series, I'm holding down control here and just left clicking to put in each of these walls. I can then let go and there we go, that's good. Uh, I can just let go and use my hold down the right mouse button. Whoops. Um, if I want to, sorry, <laughs> trying to concentrate. <laughs> uh, if I want to move my map. Okay, so. There we go, because it's a bit jerky when you just do it like that. All right, so let's... And it doesn't need to be perfect. It's a rocky cave. It's all fine. All right. Uh, I might just put uh, a little wall on the end there. And it doesn't matter that that transects it and goes through that one. It's just to stop anybody here being able to see the whole cave around that little lip and things. Um, any of these I want to move, I might just adjust this one slightly. So if I want to be a bit more precise, if I hold down shift, it won't snap. So I can be a little bit more precise with where those ends are. Same here. Um, and I'm just going to move that end around there a bit. And that should be fine. Nice and easy. Uh, do I want to do anything um, with this? Now this is a big rock. Um, I am going to do a little bit of wall around here for a reason. Uh, and if you happen to know this adventure, then you'll know what that reason is. But everything else, that's all good. Yeah, we can do that. That's happy with that. All right, so let's uh, quickly read the bit from the module, what the heck this is all about. So this is talking about the faint smell of smoke hangs in the air as you ascend the rugged ridge on the lower slopes of the hill. 50 yards away, a cave mouth opens at the bottom of a ravine. Uh, so this is the ravine that goes down, and there's this cave mouth here. So the whole thing slopes as we go, uh, slopes down as we head towards the top of the map. Um, hunkered down by a boulder 20 yards outside the cave, evidently keeping watch is a single bugbear. So this is the rock that I'm using for that, and I wanted to give a little bit of cover for it, which is why I put those walls there. Uh, this is a really straightforward encounter, this one. This is basically turn up and beat the cack out of some monsters. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. So, uh, first of all, let's make sure we get our bugbear. Have we got bugbears? Of course we've got bugbears. We've got, we've got lots of bugbears. Why have we got two? Doesn't matter. All right, slap this bugbear out. He's going to be hiding here. Now, it does say in the description that he's hunkered down, uh, evidently keeping watch is a single bugbear. Now, the fact that it's in the description would suggest he's doing a terrible job of hiding. Um, so if the characters quietly take out the lone bugbear, they have a chance to surprise the raiders in the cave. Um, obviously, otherwise the sentry will shout a warning uh, and then retreats back to the cave itself. So the marauders in the cave include a whole bunch of gits. Uh, four bugbears. So let's slap these bugbears out straight away. We can move them out again in a minute. One, two, three, four bugbears. Um, an orc. Well, we haven't used any orcs yet, so let's go to the SRD. We we'll go to monsters, and we can just search for our orc. Ta -da. Now it's obviously got the old image. Uh, I could just slap him straight out. Actually, we're not going to do anything specific with him. Um, what I do want to do is I'm going to change his name just so that if they end up talking with him and I go, oh, what was his name? <laughs> and I start struggling through the module to find that one little bit. So, brr, 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 brr. <laughs> Axe Biter, some of these names. <laughs> I mean, of course, your players won't be seeing it written down, so say whatever you want. And that's all fine. He's definitely going to be hostile appearance. Yep, that's all good. Vision, we don't need vision and stuff for our monsters. That's fine. Always for owner show the hit points. That's my default. I like that. Thank you very much. There we go. So, brr, brr, brr. <laughs> Mr. Axe Biter. 
<laughs> uh, is in there. Uh, now it says he's got 18 hit points. So if we open him up, uh, it's giving him 15. So we can just update this. Now because I, hello. Um, now because I've got this in here, I haven't dragged it over to the monster part over here. That's I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> it's absolutely fine for me to do that. Um, what it means though is this token becomes a unique token if i delete this token off i can't just drag the monster back on so this is not the best way to do it for um for monsters we really should be popping them over there now i am just going to drag generic orc over there so it's there for next time um but on this occasion you can just drag it from a straight from the srd if that's what you want to do but there's nothing special about him apart from he's got a couple of extra hit points so we're gonna just do that uh, and he can hang about in this cave. I don't need to hide these tokens or anything because I've put walls in. Uh, there's also an ogre in here. So, helps if I can type, of course. So, I let's copy the ogre across. Okay, make sure we've got the ogre here. And now I'm going to dump the ogre over here. And, of course, he's larger. Now, this ogre also has a name. So, if they've got him a name, let's give them, let's give them a name so that we can reference that. It just adds a lot more flavor. Uh, so again, parents don't need to worry about any of that. That's all good. All of this stuff is great. And he's just a default ogre. Don't need to do anything with him. Um, but obviously he's got his features, um, you know, his javelin, his great club, but stuff like that, no spells or anything. So just the straight default. So he's going to be in here. All right, so it talks about, um, the marauders in the cave include axe biter, four bugbears, and an ogre named Gog. Ogre fights and uh, sorry, Gog the ogre fights until slain, while the rest will flee if axe biter is killed. If the characters examine the cave walls, okay. So this is pretty much this is almost done. It, it really is quite straightforward. I'm going to put him down here in his. I don't know. He's going to be having a snooze or something like that, and these others can be scattered around. Uh, there's no kind of mention of campfire that I've seen so we can just chuck them all in here doing whatever they want to do um, I nearly said something I shouldn't say uh, let's add on uh, a journal for this though because for found Delva we've got all of these different bits uh, we've got this one for thunder tree I've, hang on a minute I've got one for thunder tree did we not do one for I don't think we did one for the um uh the the wizard encounter i mean i don't think we really needed one hang on let's just have a quick look did i do one for old owl well oops don't want to do that i think this was straight straight so straightforward i didn't do it it's all about this chap and his conversations and with and tour is, is very similar um what i do want to do though is i do want to put a couple of i do want to put a journal in this one because there is a specific there's no encounter locations or anything like that for it um, but I will create a journal for this um, which is because there's not a lot to say there really is not a lot to say in this one at all um, but I do want to add a page and I'm going to make it a map location even though the module doesn't have one I'm going to call it cave painting I just call it CP doesn't matter uh, because if the characters examine the walls of the cave, they find a strange scrawled drawing on the northwest wall. The drawing pre predict <laughs> depicts. Let me just paste that in. All right. So I just need this here just to remind me of what that is if they go looking around and everything else. All right. So I don't need to get carried away, make this particularly special or anything. Um, and I'm going to pop that out here uh, as a note. Just to remind me that if they are bumbling around inside the cave, they can find that. Uh, that's all I need. Good. Done. Thank you very much. Yeah, don't need that either. Go away. Easy peasy. So I can just double click on that. Reminds me of the cave painting. Everything else is just about having a bundle. <laughs> that's all it matters. Right. The only other thing in here is it talks about... Um, Axe Biter's band plundered several homesteads further north on their way to Wiventor. An unlocked treasure chest in the cave holds some stuff. It doesn't actually say stuff. I said stuff. Uh, now, one of the things it's got is perfume. 
Have we got perfume? We have got perfume. Okay, so I've got to tidy this crap up. That's ridiculous, isn't it, over here? So perfume is worth five gold pieces, which is exactly what they want. So I can drag one perfume out, dump it there. It's going to create our item pile. Um, and actually, it says there are three of them. So here is our item pile straight away. We'll get rid of that. Yeah, get rid of that. Yeah, get rid of that. Um, and we can open this up. Um, just check appearance and stuff like that. Okay. So uh, update the item pile, add currency. Yes, I want to add currency for this. Um, what was it? It's 180 silver. And it was 15 of that stupid electrum that nobody really cares about. But there we go. Uh, okay. Ta -da. Uh, now I can configure this. Um, do I want it just to be... Now it talks about a unlocked treasure chest so we probably ought to make this a container um, and again we can just go and pick all these images um, and decide what we want to use so we're going to go to core we're going to go to icons we're going to go to containers we're going to go to chests um, simple a simple box brown let's use that um, oh copied a whole lot will you i don't think it did I was going to say this is going to just a slightly quicker way of doing this but not the way i've just managed to do it um and we can just paste that in there just so that we're using the same one for each of these it's all fine i'm not too worried about that it's not closed we can just leave that update the item pile there it is beautiful players can come in they can see that they can raid it etc good job um they're going to keep their treasure down here that's where that hides. Uh, let's change the name of it though. We're going to call Perfume Times Three. Uh, just call it Plundered Loot. There we go. And it, again, it doesn't need to be hidden. They can find that. They've got to get past the ogre. I don't know. <laughs> if they can deal with all of this lot, including the orc and the ogre, they probably ought to just be able to find that loot. It's not exactly huge amounts, is it? Okay, so. Uh, let us just check we're happy with this. Close my ridiculously large monster tab. It's going to be Haley. It's always Haley, isn't it? Let's chop Haley out. Okay, so what can Haley see? So again, that rock is providing some cover uh, and blocking some vision. Um, all of these seem appear to be working. Oh yeah, that suddenly got a bit nerve-wracking, hasn't it? We can move in here, uh, explore. We haven't got any silly cave problems going on there, which is great. Good. And she moves much quicker because of token ease. Okay. Uh, I think this one's done. I don't think there's anything else we need to do for Wyvern Tour. It really is very straightforward. And remember, the reason why they may come here um, partly is because Harbin Wester um, asked them to come here um, to um, so defeating the Marauders at Wyvern Tor completes a quest given to the party by Townmaster Harbin Wester in Phandalin and delivers on a promise to Mr. Costa Old Owl Well. So they can actually get a reward from two people um, by doing that. So there's, there's a good reason they might come here, but it's mostly for loot. It doesn't necessarily progress the storyline. Uh, now remember when we were looking at using Figma and I had everything charted out. One of the things they might do is go to Old Owl Well. They talk to the wizard there, who happens to be a red wizard of Fae. Um, and he says, oh, yeah, he can share information. If they come and do this, they can come and do this. And then he can tell them where Cragmore Castle is. Which brings us on nicely to the next one we need to do. The next scene we need to do is start doing Cragmore Castle. Getting that sorted. Uh, so for this video, that's it. Really easy one. Um, and again, this didn't take very long at all. Uh, even though I'm talking all over it. We're getting really quick at just being able to slap these things together now. See you guys. Take care.